and we're live. Hey, I see Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Let's just wait a sec before we launch into this and see who comes first. I have been working, 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 trying to see if I can get parts that will cooperate so that I can make something like this necklace because I made it, I thought it was like nine, ten years ago, but it was really um, about 12. And I think, I'm going to have to look, I think there might even be a video. So I'll get that too. But this will be a better one because I'm going to show you all the ins and outs because back then on YouTube we couldn't stay on more than 10 minutes. It wouldn't let us. Who else is here? Dara and Catherine. Yay! So I had it kind of assembled here. And I took a picture of it to see what I had done because having needed to use my phone to make the video. But this is, um, you guys have seen this picture over and over again. This week it's been in my newsletter, I think four times. And I'm talking about it on the group all the time. This is, this is the original one that I made a long time ago. And this one used to be in one of our magazine ads. And we always had a lot of comment on it. And what people asked me about the most was how... What was that? I was looking at the Oh, she was looking at little sounds. Okay. What people wanted to know the most was how you made this chain. Because there are so many other applications for you to use with that. And I just, I got busy and I never did show. So I'm going to show you today. It's really easy. It might look like it's complicated, but it isn't at all. So what we're going to do is here is my sample that I've been working on here for the last couple of days. It's um, been taking a little time to get it done because there are a lot of steps to it. Hi Sharon, buenas tardes a ti. Um, so where did I put all those buttons? Oh geez, that's, I've been doing that all day. You ever have a day like that? It's like you have something in your hands, you have something in front of me, you and you leave them somewhere Oh, okay. Yeah, there are a lot of steps to making this necklace. First of all, is getting all the stuff together that you'll need, and I'll show you. You know, um, in fact, there was a list in a newsletter. I think earlier this week there was a list. So if you get the newsletter, go back through your email and you'll find it again. Um, I'll try to make another one for you. But anyway, first it takes time to gather all this stuff and you're going back and forth, especially I was because I couldn't do it exactly the way I had done it all those years ago because these flowers were vintage. They were all gilding brass and I just don't have any anymore. And this Rose Monte was awesome. I loved that. And then I ran out of them, couldn't get any more. I keep looking for them. So that was it. And I didn't have this round mount. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to need something kind of substantial here. Because, you know, as you can see, this is the one side of the chain. We're going to make the other side together. This is kind of substantial, you know, to be going on your neck. So whatever you ha have hanging in the middle, you know, there needs to be something to it, right? Hey, Debbie Nicolaus and Deb Maurer. So glad you're here. So as you can see, this would make a really good bracelet. When it, this is too long because it's for the neckline. But this would make a really good bracelet. In fact, it could be the top of a charm bracelet. You could have stuff hanging like, you could take these little flowers and pierce them and have them hanging, you know. And you could have some little, you know, beads and all kinds of stuff hanging from it. It'll be a, a stupendous, really great charm bracelet, and that's going to be my next project. But the, the thing about this that was difficult is um, I used originally bead and link chain, which most of you who've been with me for a while know, and I'm not able to get it at this time. So, boohoo. It's been hard to get for a while, now I'm not able to get it. So, I have to find something else. But I, I'm going to use bead and link chain because I had enough to do this. 
you need about three feet of chain, believe it or not. It takes a lot of chain to do this. So, um, and I make the sides about eight, eight and a half inches long. So anyway, let's start from the beginning. Okay, so first you have to gather all your stuff together. Decide what you're gonna use, and you know, that'll, that'll change. You'll go back and forth on that for sure. Um, then you've gotta paint. I use lunar paste. This is clear skies, we have plenty of it. I love lunar paste, love, love, love it. Okay, so I use love lunar paste, but um, you could use Gilder's paste if you wanna make a paint out of it by putting the mineral spirits in it and you know, getting it look kind of liquid, you can do that. Um, you could use a Lumiere paste, you know, whatever you want, but get, I was looking for something that was a real good blue that would work. So I opted for this because we had just gotten some in. So anyway, lunar paste. We have plenty at the site. If you don't have any yet, it has the consistency of Inca gold. If you ever used Inca gold, this is virtually the same thing. And um, kind of takes its place. I think it's a little less expensive too because Inca gold has gone really high and you can't get it in the United States anymore either. So that's the end of that. So I found lunar paste and I love it by Simon Hurley. Have you ever heard of him? He's a, he's a scrapbook type guy, paper guy. So anyway, I had lunar paste and I just took and I painted them, you know, and I kind of shabby painted them. I didn't get fancy. I didn't worry if, you know, every little bit was covered or anything like that. I figured I could touch it up with a paint pen later. I'm not gonna worry about it. And then these pieces were kind of, um flat so it was harder for the paint to stick to them I should have taken a piece of steel wool and roughed it up first but I didn't so anyway um, you use this piece and you use this piece it looks like here I got one here this we have lots of these in brass socks and lots of these too in raw brass so they work. So that's what I did. I painted them all up. Then I made my bead sections. You have to figure out how you're going to do your bead sections. I have five beads to every section. And got them ready. Then I'm starting to get ready to work. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you how I do the assemblage part in the front. Okay? Because we're, we're about ready to get that part done. We have all our preliminaries. So here's the chatty squirrels and as they were in the original chatty squirrels necklace, they were set in a bezel that was too big for it and the backs was, um, well actually I don't think I did anything looking at it but this was a, this is a 30 millimeter bezel and chatty squirrels are like 26, 27. So when you put it in, it's too big. So I just painted it inside. So we have a little color coming up. And then when it was dry, I glued the squirrels in. And then I put my turtle back on. So I have one here. Let's just do that. Because that's kind of important. I was thinking, I was forgetting about that. So that's what I do. First of all, I just take a little bit of E6000. See, I painted the inside of this blue. So I'll put a little bit on there. That's more than plenty. And I'll put them in. And then what I'll do is just try to get them lined up. Make sure, like, you know, the space around it is equidistant so that, you know, you don't have too much on one side and not enough on the other and all that. Yeah, that's a squirrel. You know that, Lisa. Um, and then when this sets up, I will put this. I, gl I glue it in here, too. In fact, I'm going to do that now so it starts setting up. That will help it to stay where you want it to be instead of moving around when you're pronging it down because that activity might make it move and you don't want it to move. So I'm going to put him in the middle. And now the big deal is I just want to be sure that I have him right, besides having the border right, I just want to be sure he's really good and in the middle. As I want him off kilter. That's not too bad. 
So now I'm going to just push this aside when it's set up. I'll put the sides down. You guys know how to do this, like making a bearing, basically. Just prong it down, and there you go. And then you'll have something that looks like this. Actually, this is a good um, thing you could do just to make a necklace, you know, just a medallion necklace, something, a pendant to, to hang. So I think paint worked perfectly on everything I see. Yeah, it did, Cindy. Um, paint works really good on metal. And I have a lot of videos on painting on metal and changing color up. So, yeah, it works very good, very good. So anyhow, so this is ready to go. So you have to do that, too. That's part of your prep. Then you get your crescent, you know, this piece. We have them at the site always. I try hard not to ever be out of them. So anyway, thank you, Debbie. Um, so what I needed to do, because look at this. I want you to see this. I had kind of a problem when I got this part made. Put this stuff back without losing it all. I won't be able to find anything. Okay, when I got this part together and then I started laying out my collage, you can see this is really heavy and big. So if I just do like a flat type collage here and don't step it up, build it up a little bit, it'll look wimpy next to that. So the only thing you could do would be is if you make this, make it with smaller beads and make it with a more delicate chain. And you could. Um, but anyway, I bought this, so I was like, well, I need to do it that way. I need to make it chunky because the original one was chunky. So basically, I just need more on here. So what I did is I started building a shim in the middle. You guys know I do that. When I do assemblage, a lot of times I put buttons down first as shims because it builds it up, high, low, gives it dimension. YouTube Flash has picked me. I've never seen anything I love more. Aww. Uh, well, I'm glad you like it. You can learn to make one too. It's not hard. There's just a lot of steps to it. Okay, so now this is going to be for my focal, but this is still going to be too low. I need it to be high. So I found this really beautiful old shell button. And I'm gonna glue that down. And I'm gonna glue this on top of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that now and then try to work around it without moving it because I need it there as a point of reference. So here I'm gonna go take care of this. Where's my? I'm going to have black chicken this week, Javi. Is he sleeping? Yeah. He's sleeping. She put him to sleep. <laughs> okay, so I want to get this centered as good as I can. Let me just see. Yeah, it's good. If a little bit of glue would glurp out underneath it, that would not be a big deal because no one's probably going to see it anyway. But you want to try and avoid that. And you want to get this dead straight in the middle, which it is. I don't want it way up high here. Most of my stuff I like a little bit lower. So I'm going to just pull this down a little bit, and that will help to create more dimension to the piece as well. Then I'm going to glue these guys in. On, I should say. On it. You, and I'm just putting it in the middle. That's all you need, really. Some in the middle. And then now we have to center it and push it down. And we want to be careful that we didn't put too much glue on it because then it would come, you know, hanging out. We don't want that. But I put that first bit down first so I could lift everything up because it really needed to be lifted up. Okay, so now that's pretty good. So now I'm just trying to work around it. So I took a picture, and that's the one you saw, of what I was thinking with this, so I wouldn't forget. That's a good thing to do. So I'm going to kind of work from this a little bit. I'm going to put the picture back here. And so what I'm going to do first is I need to deal with um, 
I need to deal with these pieces first. And like I say, they're shabby painted. They're not, you know, perfect. They didn't need to be. But I need to get some dimension in here. So I'm going to slide two in. You see, I can virtually get them in underneath. But I got to try something first before I glue them down. And then I'm going to go for the next one. I might turn it this way. I'm not sure. I might use another shim. Let me see. That would be here probably. And here. They don't have to have the same diameter, but they have to be about the same thickness. So I might use a little shim here. That might work better for me to do that. And then it kind of goes under... Then the next one, lay down a little bit. I like I like the high and low. It looks more natural to me. That's that's why I do it. So I'll bring this down a little bit too. That, and then this would be the last one. I do three every, each side. And I'm gonna pull this down a little bit and put this here. Always leave your hole at the end free. Make a point of that don't want that to be covered okay so let's see so I don't have it there push up a little bit I can see this is great because I can see now by looking at it with you if it's gonna be where I want it to be and I think it is so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this stuff in I'm gonna go for it now and glue this stuff in. So, next thing I'll do is glue my second button shim in. And as you can see, I don't do a lot of glue on the back. You don't need it. Just push it down. It'll spread around enough to cover. See, that one came out the holes. That was not great. That's okay. No one's going to see that. All right, so now I'm going to put my other one. And it actually is going, you know, kind of under the middle one. I'm just wanting to be really sure that I don't knock that sideways and get it, you know, so it ends up being crooked, okay? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, one of these guys here. One of these guys here. I have to really move along with this because I don't want this to go too long today. There's just a lot to it, you know. It's not complicated, but there's just a lot to it. And if you guys have seen my assemblage videos before, you kind of know. Oh, uh, you know, I would do it this way or that way. And that's fine. You don't do it like me. Do it, do it the way you would. This is how I would. Okay. All right. Set up a little bit. In the room. Yeah. Then I put this one and the last one. Okay. Let's see, Lori, you're not late. Nobody's late. Shim, S-H-I-M. Google it. That's what people put under furniture legs to make them even and all kinds of stuff. It's, it but applies here too. It's shim. S-H-I-M. So I'm using a button as a shim. Okay. So take that out. A little bit too much there. Put this down. Over here. Okay. Everything's showing. That's good. Yeah. That'll do. That'll do for now. Anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I have the next layer, which are these little flowers and there are six of them too but I'm gonna bend them a little bit and guys before I forget to don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you've not done so please do that for us it helps us out it helps our rank so that more people will see us at YouTube People have been doing that, and our subscribership went up a little bit, and people are seeing our videos more, so it's working. So if you would not mind, it takes like 
nothing to do that. To subscribe to us. And also the likes are very important too. YouTube looks for that. And also the comments that are underneath the video. So you can comment on here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do a video this week. I'm going to do a, a drawing, I mean, this week. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the comments I have, not here, but under the video. So you don't have to worry about doing it in real time. That that's I think that's fairer to the people who can't watch it when we're doing it. So you have to comment under the video, and you have 24 hours to do it. So like by 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon... I'm going to go and count them up and find out, you know, do a, a, a number thing and uh, find out who won. And maybe it'll be you. So, comment under the video. Like a lot of people make comments right straight underneath the video, the video picture screen, whatever you want to call it. Comment there. And you have almost a day to do it. So that way, the ones who come in late can be included because before the way I had it was you have to be here for the video to get in on it. And just not everybody can do that. So we're gonna make it more, we're gonna make it fairer, more fair, fairer, whatever. I need more glue. Let's see if I got this one working. Yeah, it's something new all the time, right? So, shim fills in space access love. There you go. Gloria, very, very good. Very, very excellent explanation there for Lisa. Okay, now I'm going to get this open. Because I've not used a tube for a little bit. Alright. I think this will be better because there's a lot of gluing going on. There's a whole lot of gluing going on here. So, got ads. Okay, so now I have to figure out, you know, how I want to fill on this. I've got nice dimension, but I have base showing still, and I don't like that. So I want to see what I can do about filling in a little bit here and there. But keeping the feel of it and keeping the flow of it and all that. So... I gotta wipe it off. That's the thing about these cells, and I think you lose more than you use because it comes oozing out. Okay, here we go. So I might put that there. Where did I do it here? I'm looking here to see what I did. Okay, I did this one over here. So this is why if, you, if you're making something and you're not going to finish it, take a picture of it because then you won't forget your thought. So I'm going to put this here, and then this one was pointing up on the other side, and it'll be, I don't like leaves pointing up into the neckline though, I really don't like that look. So, but I'm afraid if I put it this way, I don't want it to look too matchy-matchy, but it would be balanced, so maybe I should just do that. These, what I like about these parts, these leaves, um, is that they bend and manipulate nicely. Okay, that's good. I'm going to do this. And by the way, guys, all the parts that I use in this video are from Bisu Boutiques, and you can buy them there. Every last thing is on the site. I don't think there's one thing that's not on the site. So, we don't have a lot of squirrels left, but there still are a few. I'm going to go snag them. I've got some pretty good deals going on right now. So, anyhow. Yeah, please like the video. Please comment. You know, please um, subscribe. We don't make any more money for that. We don't make much of YouTube at all. Nobody does these days. But things have changed drastically. But, um... It does help our rank, and that is that makes a difference, too. Okay, so I got those on there. Then I had these little Hawaiian beads. I love these beads. And I discovered I had a few left in yellow. I thought, well, you know, that would be a kind of a nice accent color. 
So I have four of them. And I love these beads because you can hide the hole and use it like a stone. You know, so I, I really like that look. So I'm going to put one right here. And then I got to get on the other side. So I just go here. I like it to be balanced. I, I wouldn't like to see like three on one side and two on the other. Although, you know, you do what you like. It's your project. You do what you like. If you think that looks better, then do it. Well, listen to me. Okay, I'm going to put this on here in the back. And I'll put this here. Okay. So now we're getting to the part that's kind of fussy because you've got to figure out, you know, where the holes are and where you need to fill it in. And I've got, I don't know if you guys can see, but I've got a lot of space right in here in here at the top the bottom's pretty well taken care of but I need to put some stuff in there so let's see what I've got I have these leaves which are from the site we always use these leaves when we made jewelry to sell to the stores back in the 90s I could never be without them I couldn't make my jewelry without these leaves I had to have them um, so I'm going to push that down a little bit and so the next one, where will I put it to balance this side? It might not be in exactly the same place. Yeah, put it here. Okay, how's that? Look at the picture. I always do that. I go back and I look, is this going to be balancing? I'm liking it. It's not too bad. So I'll do that. And then I maybe put a few more of these. Honestly, for the sake of time, I may have to actually finish this piece later, but I want you to see the main things that are the most important right now. What I need to do that will take time is I need to fill this piece. And those of you who have watched me do assemblies before know that I always fill a piece. I go back and find the little cracks and crevices that, you know, weren't taken into account. And I fill them with something like little stones or pearls or whatever kind of thing. Like, let's see the original. So I use, these were bigger so it was easier, but I use Rosemont teas and little gingerbread leaves in here this one i remember this went together so easily and i think it was because these were thicker brass and they just fit they just fit but this one may have to be kind of fussed with a little bit more now here's this button mm, i don't know if i want that to show Let's see That would just stand more as a shim and put something else on it. Which actually goes with this when we'll have more dimensions. So I think I'll put that there. At least for a few minutes. See, I covered up that whole flower. Which I hate doing that. That's, you know, why put it there, right? Here is where I was going to put it. But I need some dimension here and some fill. Okay, so I have a few more of these flowers left because my original plan was I was going to have this completely made so you could see what one that's all made up looks like. And then I was going to have one that we could make. But then I realized there's no way that we could do this in like an hour. There's just no way that's going to happen. So it's like, okay, back to drawing board. So I kind of made this part way so we could finish it together. So now, since I covered my flower and I still need more dimension, I'm gonna put a flower on top of that button shim. And it kind of tilts nice. I like how it's tilting. I, I a lot of times bend the leaves on the flowers. 
make some, I don't know, look more natural or something to me. I don't know. I want to get some of that off. It's a little bit too much. All right. So now I'm going to put one on this side because, you know, I like to be even. If you guys don't like to be this even, then fine. You can make it any way you like. It's up to you. It's your, it's your necklace. Okay. So I'm going to put this. Oh, let's see. That's sticking up too much. So I'm going to move this up a little bit. And that. Now I covered my hole, which is not good. No, I didn't. It's still there. I still see it. Okay, so now I'll put this in. Bring it down a little bit more. Good. That works. Now, I can't turn this now because if I do, stuff will move. But <clears throat> what I just did, that's going to take some time to work with, is um, I just created more space in here that needs to be filled. I need to fill space. Let me push this up a little bit. I need to fill space in here, a little bit in here, a little bit here, 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 and then it'll be good and finished so that's going to take me a little time but I wanted to show you basically my thought process of how I would put something together and how I would try to be sure that whatever dimension I had in the statement piece in the front would be um, I gotta move this over it's drifting you know it would be big enough it wouldn't be wimpy you know, it wouldn't look good. You got this big chunky neckline. It's got to have something that is not wimpy. So that's what I was going for. So anyway, let's push this very carefully to the side, and we're going to work on the bracelet. Well, it's not a bracelet. It could be a bracelet if you wanted to be. Of course, it could. But um, we're going to work on this. So to make this. You need approximately eight inches of bead and link chain here on this side and eight inches on this side. And what you want to do is you want to cut it so that on each end, if possible, you just have this loop and not the other connector. Now on the one I, I'm going to use it, I do have one on there and I needed it for a month. But try to keep it so that you have this type of link. Let me see if I can... Uh, can you zoom on that hobby a little bit? Zoom into what? I want to show them how this looks close up. Okay. This open part. Try to have that on either end if you can. It will make it easier for you. Okay. So you've got total 16 inches on this. You're going to need two of the big tulip beads and we have lots of them at Beast with Chicks, so don't worry about running out we got lots of them these are cool they make good earrings too so we need two of those and then we need our beads so this one this one this one this one this one so there are five sections and they measure about an inch and a quarter so when they're all connected up it'll be long enough to go with this so what I do first is I start by connecting these up so I'm going to put a little bit of jump rings I know I've got enough here laying around but I can't find them right now so we'll just go ahead this way um, and we'll open them And I'm just going to connect them together pretty good. And you want to be sure that you get the, you know, everything nice and flush when you put things together, you know, because you don't want it to fall apart. But you guys aren't going to believe how easy this is. It's like so, so easy. 
I've forgotten. And then I started working on it today. And I'm like, oh, that's all it was. Yeah. And I don't know where I learned it. I think I may have just been messing around. I'm not saying nobody else ever came up with it because, you know, you can never say that. But I think I was just messing around down in my workshop one day and I came up with this. And it worked out. Some things do and some things don't, right? Okay, so now I'll go the other one. Hi, Michelle. How you doing? Thanks for coming. I know I sent the invite out kind of late. I was just having trouble getting everything done this week. Okay, I made a mistake already. Okay, well, I can fix it. So I just have to find my other section. All right. Oh, it's right here. Okay. Too busy talking to you guys. Okay, so this one with the patina beads goes in the middle. So I just want to be sure I get it there. Okay. And this one. And I'll count these beads for you so you can know how many you need, okay? I carry all these beads at the site. So anyway, so you're gonna need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight glass cathedral beads. So you're gonna need for the whole entire project, you're gonna need 16. One, two, three, four, five, no. Five, six, seven, eight, yeah. This, these are different beads. These are patina beads and they're acrylic. And we might have some at the site. If not, you know, you can put anything else in you want or you can use more cathedral beads. I just ran out and I didn't want to break another strand. So anyway, and this filigree bead, you can see I've touched it with color. I just kind of, just kind of took it. I had a little bit of color on my brush and I just kind of hit it like this, just very light. Then wiped it off and let it dry. So it's very random. There's no, you know, fussing that goes with it. And then we start hooking things up. So move this out. And here's my chain. Now, what I've discovered is, yeah, this looks like about work. Every fourth round oval connector is what's going to get hooked into here and I think I'm going to do the, the this one side first because you might be able to see better so there's one two three four and I'm going to hook it right in here to this I'll go ahead and hook it then I'll, I'll, have, I'll hold it up and show you this is so so easy and if you counted your chain off right and your bead sections measure out right, it would go together so fast. And it looks complicated, but it's not. So now I'm going to hook that in there. And I want to get that real good and flush because this is um, a skeletal part. <laughs> yeah. This is a skeletal part, and if it pulled loose, it could you know, mess up the necklace. So you don't want to do that. So you want to get it real good and tight. So let me get to the four. And make sure that it's laying flat when you're putting it on, not on the side or all twisted up. It's very important. So now here again. But this one, so now I'm going to use another pair of pliers is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to get in here and close it. Oops. I'm going to close this real nice. So it's nice and flush. Okay. I think that could be a little better, but I'll come back and get it later. Anyway, so I, just to show you, here's what I did. I took this bead link chain and I just, on the first section, I just counted off four and I cooked connected to that. That's all I did. That's it. So now I need my next four. So you got to make sure you have it all laying out right because you know they want to 
get all folded up on you. Okay, so now I gotta count off four. One, two, three, four. This one will go in this link. Just, you know, be sure you don't get it all twisted up because if you do, then it makes it hard. So don't do that. You know, I should not be using this one. I should be using this one. Okay. One, two, three, four. Gets in here. Guess I opened it enough. Yeah, and you want to be sure that you get the right amount because if you get too much, then it's a problem. Yeah, four. You'll have to go back and take it apart because it'll drape and you don't want that. Okay, so now we're gonna count off one, two, three, four. Again, get a jump ring ready. Four here. I never get them open good enough, and then I have to go back. Okay, so make sure I've got this laying off flat. Yep, I do. And I'll close it really nicely. That's a little crooked. I don't like that. I think that's good enough for now. I'll go back. I always go back when I'm done and check all my closures and links and joins and everything. Okay, so I need to count four more. One, two, three, four. This will be this one. And this is the last one that we're going to connect this way before we start doing the other side. And then I'll show you the finish, which is also very simple. Nothing to it. I got it worked out before you came today, just for you. Just for you. Okay, it's closed. All right. So now I'll put the, the, the other side on. Which one did I have? Okay. Okay, I do have that one little hook, but I think on this end it'll be okay. Okay, so I need just to count off four again and do the same on this side. That's all I need to do. Okay, four. I wanted to see if I had more 10 millimeter jumps because these are need to get you know have enough room to put this I don't think eight will quite cut it so I need to do one two three four here we go again here we go again and I just go through that other side and then just go close like I say you know experiment experiment around with your chain I think some heavier paper clip chain would work or you could use the lighter stuff if you were using smaller beads, that would be fine. Uh, maybe some Rolo, but not too heavy. I like peanut chain, and I'm going to show you in a minute what we have. Okay, let's see. Here we go. I'm going to turn it this way. And we'll open this and we'll turn it again. All right, so one more join before we finish it off. Tommy's quiet today. 
think she's teaching herself something. Let's see. All right. So that's that's good. So now I just have to hook up the ends and push them through the bead caps, and we're good to go. So now what I have to do is bring my jump ring drawer out, which is a pitiful mess. And see, I know there are some big jumps down in the bottom here. We need the skin out ones. Actually, if I had to use like a silver one here or something, it wouldn't be the end of the world because um, no one's going to see it. So I just might do that. This is an, I think this is an 8 millimeters. So I'm not sure. It's better if you have a 10. Well, let's see if we can make it work, guys. We might be able to. Okay, so, and I need one of these short head pins. Um, I take this, push this onto it. Yeah, this is working. And this onto it. It'd be better if I had brass ox, but I don't in this side, not without going out into the warehouse, and I don't want to go do that right now. Okay, so now I've got that all on there, and it's, you can see it's going to lay real flat and nice. But I've got to thread on an eye pin, and I'll show you why in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then I'll close this. Real nice. Okay. Yeah, that worked. And I'm pretty sure that was an eight. All right, so now where's the other one? I know I brought another one out. Oh, how annoying. Here's one. This will work. So I do the same thing on each side. So I'll go ahead and I'll catch my chain. Try to get it all pointing the same way. If you can, that'll just make your bracelet smoother. So I need to go here. Okay. Come on. There we go. Now I need to thread another one of these on. And that's good. Oops, he doesn't want to stay. He's fighting me. He jumped off. Shaky hands today. Too much coffee. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to get hold of that real good, and I'm going to close it real tight. Come on. Don't bite me. All right, good. So now we've got both of our ends. And did I get this twisted? Did I do something stupid here? No, it's all good. It just, it just turned a little bit. All right, so these fit pretty good. So now all I gotta do is, I have a couple of acorn beads here, which we had some at the site, but I think they're gone now. They sold real quick. I only bought a few because I just wasn't sure about them, but they sold right out. So I'm just gonna thread my tulip cap on here and as you can see it just covers the whole thing you know and then I'm gonna put my acorn on here Come on. Let's see how I did that yeah I just put an acorn on and then I need to close this and this is very this is very important that I get this part closed good and right. In fact, I'm going to loop it because I've got plenty of wire left. I can go ahead, I mean, you know, wrap it around. So I've got plenty left here. I can do it. Because this is going to connect, this part right here is going to connect to the necklace and hold the necklace on you. And you don't want that to fall off. Not only will you feel stupid, but it might break. I'm, I'm not doing a lot of wraps. I don't have that much wire left to do it, but I'm going to get it as close as I can. Every time I challenge myself and every time I look, and I can't believe how much wire is left. But I can get that tucked in there pretty good. 
You gotta be careful, of course, when you do that, that you don't chip your bead if it's glass. Okay, or ceramic. Okay, now why are you sitting like that? All right, it goes like this. And I'm gonna fold this down. I don't know why this is sticking out so much. It shouldn't. All right, that's nicer. I like that better. All right. I'll play with that later. You get, so long as you get the point of what I'm doing here to finish this off. So here's the second one goes on nice, very nice. And I'm gonna put my acorn bead on. This is only like um, one and a half inch eye pin. I had these a long, long time ago and I just decided to use them because they work for this really nice. So I'll get, get my loop. And twist it. And you know, if for some reason this ends up like being too long for you, or you don't like the loop at the end, or whatever, you just take it apart. No one likes to take work apart, but it is not that hard to fix. And it won't take you that long either. You might decide you don't want this long of a part. You like it to sit up real close to your face, and then you might want to do just seven inches instead of I did eight. Now I know why this is sticking up because I pressed it together. Durr. Okay. Pull that. Okay. So there we have it. We've got two of them. We've got our sides. This one actually looks a little longer than this one. Ooh. Well, you know how you fix that? As you just put an extender with a big o loop there and your big jumper in there, and you're good to go. So long as you can make it match up in the front, you're good. That's the thing when you're using different types of parts all together, then you know you have it. Now, I'm not going to attach this yet because this is still wet, or if you want to call it, it's not stable yet. But I want you to get a, an idea of what it's going to look like. When it's done, let me push this up a little bit. It'll just be more embellished, a little bit more embellished. And this one goes here. But like I said, when you make these and you find, oh, I didn't like that, it doesn't work so good. You just take it apart. It's not, this is not that intricate. It's not like you were bead weaving or something all day, you know. So anyway, this is pretty much what you're going to have when you're done. Now. I, looking at this, I am not sure at all that I like these on here. I think they're too big. I think there's something else I can do. These right here, that's not too bad, but here I don't like that right at the middle of your neck. So I will probably take that apart and redo it, and it won't be hard. So I'll show you what I did when I get it done, okay, because we're running out of time here today. But this is basically what you've got. You saw my placement here. You saw how to make the squirrels in the middle. You know, how to make that, how to do the shims and how to do the chain. Honestly, I still think this looks a little wimpy for this, but maybe what I can do is take all my tulip caps off and just make it smaller beads here and here and it might work better too. I don't know, but you know, I take lots of pictures these days, so when I get it done, it'll be on the creative group. And this will probably make a good blog post, too, because I took tons of pictures showing you guys what I was doing at home. So, uh, anyway, but this is what I've got so far. I hope you'll try it. Um, all you got to do... Hi, Darcy. Um, all you got to do is get your parts together. So, I did use tulip caps. You might not want to use them. I counted your beads. You need 16, 16 on this side, 16 on this side. They're cathedral beads. We have them at the website. They're absolutely gorgeous. Filigree beads, you need one, two, three, four, five, ten all together you need. Um, and then you need your little parts down here, your squirrel and your crescent. So we have all that stuff at Beast Boutiques. I'll look it all up later, and I will put it on this video so you can see it. Alrighty, so remember, the way this is going to go, the drawing is not going to be for who attended today or who commented on the live feed because that cuts the other people out who are working and can't come. So 
We're going to do it in the comment section right under the video. So go say something there. Say something sweet to me and make my day. And I'll count you. And that will be good. I can't believe I caught you live today. I was doing your sorry rep bracelet yesterday. I wrapped it with sorry and almost done with it. Yeah, those are fun, aren't they? I'm so glad you caught us too. Be sure you go, um, Melanie, and comment today under the video.